perfect Adidam, the divine way that is avatarically self-revealed by and as reality itself. Taken from the Aletheon, Volume 5, the divine avataric self-revelation of his divine presence, Avatar Adidar Samraj. 1. The believers merely believe in believing. True knowers only know what they find out. If I am devotionally recognised, the divine is perfectly found. My revelation here is the perfect divine self-revelation. My revelation here is not only the perfect revelation of the way to realise the divine. My revelation here is the perfect revelation of the divine itself. My revelation here is the divine self-revelation that is the divine itself. My intervention here is avataric because I reveal the perfect way to realize the divine. My intervention here is divine because I perfectly self-reveal the divine itself. The universal self-nature, the egoless indivisible self-condition and self-state of reality itself is made perfectly self-evident by my intervention here. I am the self-evidence of reality itself. I am the self-evidence that reality itself is divine. I am the self-evidence that the divine is reality itself. Reality itself is what makes my intervention here both an avataric and a divine intervention. The divine person and self-condition is avatarically self-revealed by me and as me, not merely as or with reference to my conditionally here appearing bodily human form, but as the very condition with which even my conditionally here appearing bodily human form is non-differently coincident. The world is in a state of utter bewilderment because of egoity. Egoity, point of view, separateness, self-contraction, such is the basis of human design in the memory of the ordinary world. In that circumstance of ego-made awareness, people seek the divine. They are moved to seek the divine because the egoic life is the very form of suffering. The egoic life inevitably becomes associated with all the modes of suffering the search for a philosophical resolution to the problem of the suffering of separateness is inevitably pursued and, on that basis, solutions to the suffering of sort, including the search for the solution that is described as union or reunion with the divine. Human beings are in a vulnerable position. 
human beings are born into an experiential circumstance in which all kinds of apparent separations can take place. Harm can come to them. Death can occur seemingly at random. And others upon whom they depend can be separated from them or can be indifferent to them. <laughs> what human beings must realise is the prior unity of all and all. You must awaken to a fundamental emotional sense of inhering in indivisible reality itself, which does not kill you, does not separate from you, such is the fundamental nature of spiritual awareness. Merely entertaining religious beliefs or imagined ideas of God is not sufficient to truly cure the stress of vulnerability. There must be actual real God realization, actual realization of the prior unity of all and all direct realisation of the indivisible coincidence of self-radiant energy and self-existing consciousness. Real a causal God is the all-in-all-pervading, self-existing and self-radiant reality itself. When you no longer dramatise the mood of self-contraction and awaken to the prior unity of all and all, then the force of being itself infuses a body-mind complex, revealing reality itself and demonstrating influences that are forms of blessing, grace, help and awakening. However, in the event of the search for the divine, the divine itself is never truly or intrinsically, non-conditionally and perfectly known. In the context of the search, the divine is known only with reference to the egoic pattern or position of presumed separateness that is the basis for seeking the divine. Thus, in the context of the search, the divine is seen only through the lens of the human problem and not as is. If the divine were only as is from the beginning, human life would already be established in a different condition and circumstance than that of egoity. The great tradition of humankind is the search for solution, or the search for the divine, based on the problematic pattern generated by self-contraction or egoity or point of view. The reality way of Adidam or Adidam Vishiradam is not merely another form of practice based on the great tradition paradigm of the search. The reality way of Adidam is not in any sense a development of the great tradition, nor is the reality way of Adidam the end stage of the great tradition. Rather, the reality way of Adidam is the way that intrinsically transcends egoity. Therefore, the reality way of Adidam intrinsically transcends the entire great tradition or great path of return. The divine avitaric intervention has occurred in my person as my very state, and that is the basis for the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam. Therefore I say to you, if I am devotionally recognised, the divine is found. 2. Reality itself, which is self-evidently divine, and as such, the only real and perfectly a causal God, is not the saviour of the ego. Rather, the real divine is that in which the illusion of separate and separative self must be surrendered or tacitly transcended. 
Indeed, it is only the intrinsic self-apprehension or self-apperception of the egoless self-nature, self-condition and self-state that is self-evidently divine, that permits human beings to live in the mode of self-surrender rather than in the mode of narcissistic, reactive and ego-possessed struggle for ultimate survival. The truth is not that you survive forever as you presently presume or conceive yourself to be, nor is reality itself or real a causal God the instrument of permanent ego survival, ego immortality or ego salvation. In your present structural form, you are changing and mortal, but you tend to react to the fact of your mortality by seeking to protect, glorify, permanently fulfil and immortalise yourself as you presently presume or conceive yourself to be. When by means of my graceful divine avataric self-revelation you truly discover reality itself as real a causal God, then the process of radical devotion to me Ego transcending right life obedience to me and perfect knowledge of me permits you to be at peace with the mortal or finite destiny of your apparent present form and circumstance. When you perfectly know or tacitly self-apprehend what is real, you thus and thereby become capable of self-release or self-surrender. Therefore you must self-awaken to the egoless reality within which and as which you are born and go through changes and finally pass out of sight. If there is no such self-awakening, life is a tormented absurdity, a mean and unrescued centre of illusions. When you self-awaken to the intrinsically egoless divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state of reality itself, continuously transcending the egoic self in that context. You find each moment to be either a passing lesson or test, or otherwise a temporary blessing in the more than wonderful mystery in which you appear and in which you are always dissolving. The happening, of, the happening of lives, and indeed of all changes, is an automatic event. Your responsibility is to be the fulfilment of the divine law, which is intrinsic egolessness and thus and thereby unlimited relatedness or egoless love. You will inevitably persist as changes, as long as apparent embodied existence continues. But if you live the law of intrinsic egolessness, you will in every moment release all changes into the reality that is their transcendental spiritual and thus love blissful self-nature, self-condition and self-state. Three, the divine is reality itself. The divine is the very self-nature, self-condition and self-state of human existence and indeed of all existence and all appearances. The divine transcends point of view. The divine is the intrinsically egoless and perfectly indivisible self-condition of reality itself. The inherent essential condition of reality itself and of the entire apparent universe is perfectly one and single, perfectly indivisible, perfectly non-separate, perfectly non-different and perfectly egoless. Reality itself and reality 
in the mode of all apparent conditional modifications of itself is intrinsically aniconic or perfectly subjective in its nature and always perfectly subjectively self-abiding as the self-evident indivisible state of not an object or always self-existing self-ragently as the perfectly and irreducibly non-objective, non-separate, non-different, and non-egoic self-nature, self-conditioned, self-state, that is always already or perfectly priorly and irreducibly the case. Reality itself as is, is the divine self-nature, self-conditioned, self-state, that is self-located, when I am devotionally recognized. Therefore, in the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam, the divine self-nature, self-conditioned and self-state is constantly self-realized and more and more profoundly demonstrated as that realization. The reality way of Adidam is not a means or a method or technique for seeking the divine. Rather, the reality way of Adidam is the way that is based on the divine avataric self-revelation from the beginning. That is the unique characteristic of the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam. If you devotionally recognize me, you know that the self-nature, self-condition and self-state of the divine as reality itself is now perfectly self-revealed by me as me and altogether as is. If you devotionally recognize me you know that now and forever hereafter in perpetuity there is the way of most perfect divine self-realization for all beings. The habit of this late time or dark epoch is to see the world and human existence in terms of egoically proposed or egoically analysed conditions. On that basis human consciousness is viewed in the reductionist manner as a mere byproduct of psychophysical existence and in particular brain function. Furthermore, the individual human brain, regarded as the origin of human consciousness, is presumed to be entirely independent from all other human brains and all other human bodies. Such is the late time justification for the view that human existence is merely mortal and entirely characterized by separateness. However, the proposition of mere mortality and separateness is simply the product of an, of an ignorant view of reality. That point of view toward reality produces a reductionist and analytically based understanding of the nature of everything, including the nature of human existence. Religions often propose some kind of inner absolute as a means of philosophically comprehending the nature of human life and the continuation of human life beyond death. But all talk of an inner absolute is the language of the first six stages of life. In truth and in reality, the divine itself and not any inner absolute is the basis for understanding human existence. The divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state is the nature, condition and state in which the human being arises and indeed the nature, condition and state in which anything at all arises. The divine itself is, is intrinsically egoless and perfectly indivisible. The realization of reality that is the basis of right life is the realization of the intrinsically egoless 
and perfectly indivisible self-nature, self-condition and self-state, the conscious light or consciousness energy that is reality itself, that is the divine, the, re the real, intrinsically egoless, perfectly indivisible and perfectly a causal divine self-condition and person. The divine is the revelation. Therefore, the realization of the self-evident reality of the divine by means of the devotional recognition response to me is the basis of the reality way of Adidam. If I am devotionally recognized, you know or tacitly apprehend my divine avictaric person and state, and thus and thereby you know or tacitly apprehend my divine avitaric self-revelation. If I am devotionally recognized, all God ideas are transcended in the unmeditated, in the unmediated self-revelation of the divine reality or self-nature, self-condition and self-state itself. And that unmediated self-revelation makes possible a unique way. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam is prior to the exercises of egoity and self-contraction, prior to all forms of seeking. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam is truly the way of most perfect real God realization, or the realization of the self condition and self domain, that is the intrinsically egoless, perfectly indivisible, and perfectly a causal divine. Therefore, the reality way of Adidam is not about any kind of egoic exercise. Rather, the reality way of Adidam is, from the beginning, about the intrinsic transcending of ego in the divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state itself. Such is the characteristic of true devotional recognition of me and true devotional communion with me. Such is the uniqueness of the way I have revealed and given. The reality way of Adidam is the unique revelation of the divine itself. And the reality way of Adidam is the unique divine avitaric way of practice. If I am devotionally recognized, this is what you thus and thereby know. 4. The attempt to account for the apparently arising conditional world by postulating a first cause is fundamental to both Western and Eastern philosophy since the ancient days. It is the perspective of point of view or egoity that makes such ideas and that point of view perspective is an ancient folk. God ideas come from ego and God ideas not only reflect the ego itself but altogether God ideas being mere ideas reinforce and console the state of egoity and in fact subordinate the real divine to the ego and the ego search and purpose. The purpose of God ideas is to account for the objective world and the separate self by presuming the objective world and the separate self as the first and even irreducibly existing matters of philosophical importance. However, in the real process of real God realization, the first matter of philosophical importance is the prior transcending of the illusions of the non-ultimacy or of objective world and separate self. In the usual mode of philosophical or theological thinking, 
a first cause or a prime mover or a creator God is hypothesized to explain the appearance of objective world and separate self, which are presumed to be the irreducible first matters of philosophical importance. Such is ego-based philosophy, and such ego-based philosophy is the entire basis of the great tradition of the great path of return, or the global manifestation of the always priorly ego-based, and thus necessarily psychophysically based, and conditionality bound, first six stages of life. The philosophy of the first six stages of life always presumes objective world and separate self or point of view or ego I first. The reality way of Adidam is about transcending the illusory or self-objectified subjectivity of ego and the illusory or egoically objectified objectivity of world first. That being the case, the self-nature, self-condition, self-state of reality is the first evidence to be realised, not something to be realised later. The world is not caused. Rather, the world is a causally evident. Any philosophy that is concerned with cause is about the exercise of point of view or egoity. The tacit understanding of the divine as the intrinsic self-condition and the self-state of reality itself, and thus as the self-nature or reality-nature that is intrinsically egoless, indivisible and a causal tacitly and intrinsically or priorly and perfectly, transcends not merely the characteristics of Western and Eastern philosophy, but also the fundamental basis and the total enterprise of the entire great tradition, even in its most ancient historically evident traditions and modes of thinking, seeking and practicing. If you take up the position of ego, then you have a problem and you have an apparently objective reality for which to account. Merely to take up the ego position generates an entire system of modes of thinking and seeking. That system, in its entirety, is the first six stages of life, which characterise the great tradition or great path of return. That first six stages of life system is not the reality way of Adi Dam. The reality way of Adi Dam is characterised by a unique and tacit philosophical understanding, an understanding that is unique in relation to all the modes of philosophizing and underlie the great tradition or great path of return, and also unique in relation to all the modes of academic, uh, academic philosophizing. If you presume the world and the separate self principle first, then you have already commanded or determined the fundamental characteristics of your philosophy. In that case, you have already based everything on point of view, on what appears to be the case when point of view is priorly presumed to be the way it is. To illustrate the intrinsic egoless and indivisible and a causal self-condition of reality itself, I have often used the metaphor of a room in which any number of people may be sitting. Each person in the room would describe the room, or by extension the world or the universe, in a certain manner, based on his or her particular position within the room or his or her location in space and time. Similarly, if any person in the room held a camera and took a photograph of the room, the room would appear objectively as it does from his or her particular position. 
the photograph would be true as a matter of a concrete observation in basic terms of how the room looks from that particular position. Thus, the any snapshot is real from the perspective of this particular point of view. However, no such snapshot characterizes the room itself as it is or as is, and thus as reality itself. What about all the other possible points of view, all the other possible photographs? If each person in the room took a snapshot of the, shot of the room from where he or she is sitting, each photograph would pres present a different appearance or description of the room. How many photographs would be necessary and sufficient to totally account for the room or the world or the universe? Can the room or the world or the universe itself as it is and as a totality in the totality of all space-time be accounted for, even known from any point of view or from even the totality of all points of view or from necessarily space-time located point of view at all? Therefore, is it even possible from the human psychophysical perspective to really and perfectly know the very room or the world or the universe in which you are even now located. Indeed, is it not true that no matter what arises, you do not and cannot know what even a single thing or any kind of interior or exterior object is? Remarkably, the actual room itself, or the world itself, or the universe as a totality, or even any object, or even the eagle eye itself, is never known as it is. The only and constant event is the subjective illusion, or the wandering point of view that knows the objective or egoically objectified changes of necessarily limited and finite happenings, or conditionally arising changes of ego-based appearance. That always separate point of view and its presumptions, perceptions and problems is the perennial basis for all traditional or first six stages of life philosophy, and thus for all traditional and conventional mere and necessary non-perfect ideas about self, the world, the universe, God, truth and reality. In any moment, the room or any particular space-time location itself and reality itself already apparently exists or else no position within the room or within the context of reality itself could describe it. Nevertheless, the room itself is not as it seems to be from any particular point of view. The room itself is not even as it would seem to be from the collectively self-accumulated perspective of all possible points of view in time and space. Indeed, the entirely point of view based presumption that the room or the world or the universe or the space-time context of conditionally arising apparent experience is really and irredu irreducibly objectively existing is the very basis and the inherently untenable premise of all conventional and necessarily false and ultimately failed philosophy. No accumulation of points of view can ever comprehend the room as it is, not merely in either physical or metaphysical terms, but simply as it is. What is the condition within which the room is apparent? That condition is not something irreducible to any particular point of view, or even to an infinite number of points of view. 
that condition is simply as is, always already or inherently prior to point of view or space-time location itself and therefore prior to all objective appearances, measurements and experiences. Even though any particular room could, in principle, be perceived from an infinite number of particular points of view, the room itself is, as it is, inherently prior to all points of view. No point of view description can account for the room itself. The room, or the world, or the universe, or the space-time continuum, or even anyone or anything at all, is not an object. This is a remarkable fact, but it is self-evidently true. Therefore, to account for reality itself, or even for the, the world itself, or the total universe, or any apparent object, or for the real condition of self, point of view, must not be assumed a priori, priori, or as a first principle, nor in reality is the objective world, as it may be said to exist from any point of view, a first principle or an irreducible characteristic of reality itself. Indeed, the presumption of objective world and the presumption of, of objective separate self-principle must and always, as the first principle, be perfectly transcended, or else it is self-evidently impossible for right and true and inherently perfect and true to reality itself, philosophy, to be made or done. Therefore, perfect philosophy, which is the philosophy associated with the reality way of Adidam, is necessarily prior to point of view, prior to the presumption of separate self and, and objective world. Point of view defines separate self and objective world. Therefore, point of view defines whatever is sought, including the divine. From the position of point of view, the divine is described as cause or creator, but prior to point of view, prior to separate self and objective world, the divine is simply or tacitly and intrinsically self-evident and of an intrinsically egoless, perfectly indivisible, and perfectly a causal nature. Such is the perfect philosophy that is the basis of the reality way of Alidam. Therefore, on the basis of that perfect philosophy, and as the necessary tacit and always prior exercise of the inherent first principle of that perfect philosophy, the point of view presumptions of separate self and of objective world are from the very beginning of the reality way of Adidam transcended at the root. Therefore, even though the process of the reality way of Adidam can, to some extent, be described in philosophical terms, the process itself is not a philosophical or mental exercise of analysis calculation and problem solving. The process of the, the reality way of Adidam is about total psychophysical turning to me on sight, heart moved by the self-evident reality that is perfectly known or tacitly self-apprehended by simply devotionally recognising me. The true devotional recognition response to me is inherently and inherently perfectly egoless and indivisible and a causal. Devotional recognition of me is recognition of the intrinsically egoless, perfectly indivisible and perfectly a causal nature of reality itself, which is realised in devotional communion with me to be the one and indivisible self-existing, self-radiant and self-evidently divine conscious light itself. 
in that divinely avatarically self-revealed reality state, everything apparently arising is a transparent or merely apparent and non-necessary and intrinsically egoless or intrinsically non-binding modification of the divine self-condition itself or the transcendental and spiritual divine conscious light itself. 5. In reality there is no separate self as such. There is only the one and indivisible divine conscious light. Whatever apparent modification there may seem to be in the form of a body or a brain or an event in time and space, there is only the intrinsically egoless and one and perfectly indivisible and perfectly a causal and self-evidently divine reality or self-nature, self-condition and self-state. I can spontaneously speak this because this is my intrinsically self-evident and perfectly non-conditional state of self-realization of that in that and as that. I am that. When I am devotionally recognized, the process that occurs is beyond point of view and beyond self-contraction. That process is about the responsive turning to me and devotional communion with me and in due course participation in my divine avataric transcendental spiritual self-transmission to the point ultimately of most perfect realization transcending the root of egoity itself on the basis of radical or always already at the root devotion to me. That process is demonstrated as the constant devotional turning of the principal faculties of body, emotion, mind and breath to me and as the thereby motivated embrace of right self-discipline or right life in accordance with my instruction which embrace is true renunciation and as perfect knowledge or the intrinsic knowledge or tacit self-apprehension of the by me and as me divinely avatarically self-transmitted and self-revealed consciousness energy or egoless indivisible a causal conscious light that is the self-evident self-characteristic of the divine self-condition itself. Realization of me is the seventh stage realization, the most perfect realization of the intrinsically egoless and perfectly indivisible conscious light that is the divine person and self condition and self divine or reality itself. That realization is of a transcendental and egoless and spiritual and indivisible and divine and self-existing and self-radiant and perfectly a causal nature. 6. Where there is egolessness, there is a right comprehension of the world, the body and all events. But that right comprehension is not merely a mental phenomenon. The mind can become a kind of reflection of the intrinsically egoless state of divine self-realization, but the mind is not itself a source of realization. There is no inner permanent entity in the human individual. There is only the self-existing, self-radiant, intrinsically egoless and self-evidently divine conscious light.
the divine conscious light is not born and the divine conscious light does not come to an end in death. Conditional processes have a kind of continuation but they have no ultimacy. Conditional processes arise during and previous to the physical lifetime of an individual and they also continue after the physical lifetime. Nevertheless, the factuality of such continuation does not mean that there is a permanent internal principle in the human individual. In truth and in reality there is only the self-existing and self-radiant divine self-nature self-condition and self-state itself. Everything conditional is a conditionally apparent play upon that. It is not the case that you are inside the body such that it is necessary to go within and get away from the body. You are the body. It is simply that you do not divinely self-recognize the body as a transparent or merely apparent and non-necessary and intrinsically non-binding modification of reality itself. That lack of self-abiding divine self-recognition is the problem. It is not by withdrawal and dissociation from the body but rather by understanding and transcending your own act of self-contraction that reality itself or the reality condition is realized. Thus the various traditionally recommended exercises of dissociation from the body do not, in fact, support the real process of most perfect divine self-realization. Right dis disciplining of the body is, of course, necessary and appropriate. It is that association from the body, which in the traditional setting, is characteristically associated with self-discipline that must be transcended. Therefore, the body in and of itself is not the problem. Rather, it is the lack of self-abiding divine self-recognition of the body that creates a wrong presumption about the body. You are never actually in the situation you are trying to figure yourself out of. You are more than the body and you are more than not the body. In any case, the real transcendental spiritual process is not about body or not body. Rather, the entire cause of the real transcendental spiritual process is about self-abiding divine self-recognition of body, mind, world, self and things. There is no separate interior absolute no permanent entity or soul inside the human being. There is only the egoless, indivisible and a causally self-existing and self-radiant divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state. The apparent human being inheres indivisibly in that and as that. The divine self-condition does not merely continue. The divine self-condition or egoless indivisible and a causal consciousness energy or conscious light is always already the case and therefore it cannot be destroyed.
in the workings of the conditional universe, energy neither comes into being nor disappears. Rather, energy is always conserved or perpetually transformed. So also in the case of human beings, that which is the fundamental identity of any human individual is not born and does not die. That which is the fundamental identity or intrinsic self-condition does not come into existence and it does not disappear. Thus consciousness energy is not simply a characteristic of a mortal human lifetime. Rather consciousness energy is the fundamental characteristic or always prior self-condition of all arising. Consciousness energy is not merely a combination of awareness and mind and body. Consciousness energy and as such consciousness itself is a fundamental characteristic of reality itself or the one and indivisible and the causal and intrinsically egoless divine conscious light itself. The non-human beings and even so-called inanimate things are consciousness energy or the divine conscious light itself, just as and as much as any and every human being. Everything is an apparent and never separate or independent or irreducibly absolute modification of the one and indivisible divine conscious light. Therefore, and as egoless conscious light itself, no thing can be destroyed, and no one can be destroyed. Only the apparent play of conditions seen from point of view undergoes a process of apparent modifications and changes. Reality itself is never within and as its own self-context of self-apprehension, modified or changed, but it is only conditionally or merely apparently or seemingly objectively or merely from the perspective or location of point of view, modified and changed. The human being can realise perfect coincidence with the birthless and deathless divine conscious light that is reality itself. The divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state of con conscious light can be realised most perfectly. That most perfect realisation is intrinsically egoless and non-conditional. Nevertheless, that realisation is perfectly coincident with the appearance of conditions. That realisation does not involve or require or even allow the slightest degree of dissociation from conditions. Rather, that realisation ultimately outshines all conditions in divine translation. Seven. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Ali Dam has nothing to do with egoity. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Adi Dam has nothing to do with seeking. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Adi Dam has nothing to do with problem solving. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Adi Dam is the divine radical way, transcending all limitations at the root from the beginning. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Adi Dam is the seventh stage way. As such, the reality way of Adi Dam is not, in any sense, 
associated with the ego principle or separate self, or with the overcoming of the ego principle by any exercise or means or point of view or mode of thinking. My divine avataric teaching revelation is a spontaneous utterance of the egoless, indivisible and a cause of self-evidence of self-evident reality itself. Thus, reality, thus the reality way of Adidam is uttered beyond and prior to point of view. The words I use are in the mode of human language which I am constantly transforming in order to make my divine avataric teaching revelation clear to everyone. Nevertheless, my divine avataric teaching revelation is not based on the point of view presumption from which the con conventions of human language are otherwise generated. My divine avataric transcendental spiritual self-transmission is beyond words. All words require in some mode or other an accommodation to the egoic basis of language. Therefore, my divine avataric transcendental spiritual self-transmission is essentially wordless or silent or tacit. The intrinsic self-realization of the divine conscious light is the basis for all right and intrinsically divine utterance. The reality way of Ali Dam has been and altogether is self-revealed by me precisely on that basis. The reality way of Ali Dam is the way of conscious light, divinely avatarically self-revealed by and as conscious light itself. The only by me revealed and given reality way of Ali Dam is the divine and inherently perfect way that is divinely avatarically self-revealed by and as reality itself. <laughs>